Hey, welcome to uh, Top Gesser. We're back at the water system. This is our seventh season here at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, along with our consortium member, uh, Liberty Baptist University. Well, we just finished our first week, and uh, we're excited. As you can see, if you've compared the videos from last year, you'll notice that even after we ended last year, this seems a lot more bigger and more monumental. Well, it is because we hired an independent crew to come in while we're gone in November, which we came back for, and to try to clear out the rest of the water system for us. Well, as you can see, it didn't happen, <laughs> but uh, we still have a lot of work yet ahead of us. But what they did do for us is uh, basically we're pretty much close to the, to the bottom of the water pool, I think, uh, as far as depth goes. Uh, you can't see it too well because of the tools and some of the, uh, of the cleanup yet that needs to be done, but we are following the bottom of the water system. We have water in this. You say, wow, you've reached the water table? No. Uh, this water comes from rain, seeping in from the, uh, from the ground above, and, and it bubbles up, uh, bubbles up and comes from the sides of the, uh, of the water system itself and forms a pool. It's not very deep. Right now it's about maybe six inches deep uh, that we have here, but this is not the water source. Uh, the aquifer uh, to this system is still about 100 feet below us. We are now about 150 feet below the water surface. And uh, as I, ma I, made me I made mention in the article that I wrote for Bar Magazine, uh, which came out in May, we now have the oldest, we believe, uh, uh, water system in the world of this kind. There's nothing of this magnitude anywhere. But as you can see, we're not done yet. Our crew from the, uh, from the summer uh, began to tunnel back in to see if we could reach in one of the uh, one of the probes that you see here, the back end of the cave uh, of this of this uh, uh, water pool, and of course the deepest is in the center here, and uh, we have some guys there trying to shore up the ceiling for us, but uh, still with that crew working for three weeks never reached the back end of it. So our goal this summer is basically to continue to clear out probably the bottom of the pool, try to trace out its bottom, but basically concentrate on the um, on the southern or the northern side of the water pool. This would be the north and that would be the south. What you also see, uh, or at least I should say concentrate on the, the, the center, just do half of the system and try to go down as fast as we can in the, in the remaining two weeks that we have and as far back as we can because we really want to try to reach uh, the, the end of the system and try to find the bottom of this season um, if, if all possible. What, so we're excited about that and hopefully that will work out. But what you see here is that, if you remember when we first started the system years ago, we thought that this cavern here would bring us into the actual water system itself, uh, the one above my head. Well, now we know that there are actually two caverns, the one above our head, and then the one that we're digging below the shelf of the upper, ca up of the upper cavern. We have now a lower cavern. The function of this lower cavern, obviously it's not gonna, we don't believe it's gonna reach the water, the aquifer. As I said, it, with geologists have put it 150 uh, feet below us. So uh, the question is, why do they dig this upper cavern? Uh, it's still an unanswered question because actually the cavern itself slopes downward. In other words, if you were to walk in the cavern, you would walk down. So it wasn't the function of it was not to bring water to this water pool. And so uh, we're hoping maybe even yet to find maybe the source of the water, but our geologists still tell us it's probably just all natural rainwater and whatever they could collect from the, uh, from the uh, uh, structures of, or from the uh, city above to funnel it down into our water system. So if we don't get to the bottom this summer, we'll never really answer the question of, of where the water comes from. Maybe we may never know because uh, maybe there is no spring that bubbles up from below uh, that actually fed this system, which still leads us to a major question of why such a monumental system like this for just a nice little water pool like this. I mean, it's deep and it's big. If it goes back in and maybe another 20 feet, it could probably, uh, you know, collect rain, enough rainwater to feed uh, a, a population of maybe five to 600, but that's about it. We believe Tel Gezer during the height of the, of the, the Canaanite period probably had anywhere up to 2,000, 2,500 people. Uh, so really, it's a long way to come to get water when a simple little well would have done. So a lot of still, un uh, still unanswered questions, and we hope we, uh, next week come back and report to you. Uh, we'll be back farther in, maybe have reached the, the extent of the system, and then to start probing down to see if we can find the source of the water. So 
A lot of work yet ahead of us, so stay tuned. We'll look forward to you talking to you next week.